Hi everyone, welcome back to the Model Railroad Back Shop. I'm your host, Roger Gajawa. I'm here today to show you how to use real reflective striping on your Model Railroad equipment. As you know, a lot of the railroads uses reflective striping and for example, now it's required on all real cars. So to be up to date, you'll have to add this reflective striping on all your cars. The locomotives are also required to have striping on them, a yellow or white stripe, if you want to be up to date. Now this is not decal, this is real reflective striping. I've also added striping on these locomotives. This is a red color, yellow on this one, and on some of my cars, I've done patches. This car here, I added a bigger striping on the ends, and the thought was when they're loading the logs into the cars, it's going to help the, the uh, loader notice where the ends of the car are so they're not going to bang the cars on a dark colored car like that. Now, I don't model this era that requires these stripes. Uh, this was borrowed from a friend of mine. But you can still use the striping idea to make these stripes for your modern cars and locomotives or your older cars like this one, which they just decided they wanted to have something a little bit more reflective uh, so the cars would be seen at grade crossings. So I'll show you what we have here. I used to work at the highway department and we had a, a group of guys that uh, made all the signs, you know, stop signs and yield signs and all that stuff. So I just picked up a bunch of scraps from them. This one's I just put on a piece of glass for the clinic. Uh, they'd yellow, the white, you see where they cut out an A here for something. Uh, this was off a of barricade, white and orange. Now this is what they called engineer grade. There's, it's not retro reflective. There's a difference between that and reflective. You don't want this, which is the diamond pattern. Uh, this is, while this works really good out in the field for the real stuff, you don't want this in your model because you'll actually see the differences and it won't be prototypical. So let me uh, get set up here and we'll show you how uh, I've done this on a couple things. I mentioned that I work at the highway department. That's where I got my reflective material. You can also pick this up at uh, like an auto parts store. You might look in your town if it's big enough or if your county or your city makes signs, you might be able to stop by and they might just give you some scraps. You can also order this online if you don't have anything like that close to your house. So first step in this is I've measured off four inches, four scale inches. I use a general tool company scale ruler. It's got HO on this side. It's got the other scales on there. And I have a sharp hobby knife. I just take it slow and run it right down to the edge. There's my four inches. Now I have it taped off here, this because this wax paper that it's on, these pieces will just float right off of there, and you don't want you don't want them dangling around. So I've taped that, and this this won't roll up on you. So now that I have my width cut, I'll take my same ruler, and these stripes for tank cars, and I have assumed they're all of them. The ones here are three feet long, and these are 18 inches long. So you just take your scale rule, come down to three feet, press it. You can see how that's lifting. Come down another three feet. Now, 
and then you can go to your foot and a half marks. A pair of tweezers is handy to pick these up. And usually I'll stick them to the side here. They won't stick to this paper, but boy will they stick to anything else. So I'll get my parts ready here for my tank car. You can push that back down onto that wax paper while you do some more. Now they do sell decals for this process too, but there's something really cool when you're running your train and you get that light just at the right point and they light up. You're not gonna get that with decals. You see that real reflectivity. Uh, my friend Bill did a red stripe with reflective material down the side of his business car and it is sharp. I'll see if I can uh, include a movie of that in the uh, clinic here. I think I got enough to show you how this is going to work. Here's an NDM tank car that brings pesticide up from Mexico to one of the co-ops on my railroad. Like I said, this is pretty sticky except to the tape and that wax paper. You kind of really want to get it right where you want it. before you burnish it down. You can get this off. I've never had it attack the paint, but it is fairly sticky. Now, if you do want to get it off, if you can't pick it off with a set of tweezers, a hobby knife will do you can get in there without touching the paint. Another nice thing about this, you can put this on a car that's weathered to show that they've added these stripes after the car's been in service for quite a few years. That's pretty hard to do with decals because that film may show. You don't have to also worry too much about how straight these are. Uh, these are probably put on in the field unless they're a new car by some guys with some tape. They cleaned off a spot, they put the stripes on, and the car's back in service. To avoid that lettering, this one's going to be a little bit higher. Pretty much brought that one right up to the standards for today. I'm going to show you how to add more of that reflective pattern on these uh, wood chip cars, this consolidated paper car. I decided that I would want dashes on here that were six inches tall and one foot long. So I marked them out 
with my scale rule again. I got my six inch width, or my six inch width. I line it up with the scale rule and just press down until you hear a click. I don't know if you can hear that click. But that's the knife going through the reflective without going all the way through the reflective backing. Now there's no prototype for this car. So I can put these reflective markings wherever I want. I mean, what I usually do is do it about every 10 feet. And I'll use like the ribs or these marks along the bottom. see how that adds quite a bit to the car just that little bit of splash of color on there there's more to this reflective striping than just stripes the circular herald here was decaled over the reflective material the same with my older herald on this caboose I just used the common paper punch punch out a circle you just apply that on the locomotive wherever you want to put it and then you can decal right over it and then seal it it's also not meant for just locomotives and cars here's my cat service building and I added reflective striping near the door so the truck driver backing in has something to help guide him when it's uh, maybe in dusk or darkness. I've also seen this reflective striping in blue, uh, lemon yellow, and even pink. You might want to do a cancer awareness sticker or something like that. And if you go looking in the scrapbooking stores, they have these punches in a multitude of different designs. You can get stars, squares, diamonds, uh, quite a few different things that they use in scrapbooking. You can get uh, circles uh, from, I think I've seen them as small as eighth inch diameter up to an inch. There's probably even bigger ones that they use in the scrapbooking. So let your mind wander. You don't want to do every item you have with reflective striping. But let your mind wander around, see what you can come up with. It adds a cool splash of color on your railroad. Thanks again for watching. Check out my other videos, Model Railroad Back Shop. I'm on Facebook, YouTube, and you can get me at the Model Railroad Back Shop at gmail.com. And also check out my Atlantic Great Western. It has its own Facebook page. Thanks again for watching.